What is up everybody? My name is Shiv and today we're going to be doing another advanced guide. So I got a huge amount of positive response uh, from the uh, SE100 video. You guys are like, hey, I really like how you're, you're stopping this and then you're showing why you're doing this, you're explaining the logic behind it. So I figured I was going to do another one of these videos. And I wanted to do something a little bit more higher tier for those of you who are grinding out certain lines to kind of show you what you can expect. And today we're going to be doing the IL-40. Now, guys, if you've seen any of the other videos I've done before, you know that I think the IL-20 is just downright a killing machine in terms of things on the ground. And truth be told, it is a nasty plane when played correctly and if people ignore you. But when they don't ignore you, it's kind of a pain on a good day. Uh, so when I got to the IL-40, I was looking forward to some of that speed and a little bit more maneuverability while keeping a lot of the ordnance. Um, and then I had to get used to a couple things here, most notably the lack of the dual 57s that were really great for just wrecking all the soft targets at range, allowing me to just focus on uh, dropping ordnance on the hard targets. Uh, but instead, I get six of these 23 millimeter cannons. And guys, I'm here to tell you that they're actually pretty damn good. So here's what we're going to do. All right. So we're going to go over the build. Uh, we're going to talk about the crew skill. We're going to talk about the upgrade equipment slots. We're going to talk about the consumables. And then we're going to go through the step-by-step -step footage like we did last time. And just a little word of warning. There's some baby rage from a player who thought I was cheating. In an IL-40. I'm not even joking, ladies and gentlemen. I really wish I was. So this ought to be a lot of fun. So let's get to it, shall we? All right, so the first thing we want to talk about is crew skill, because crew skill is probably one of the most important things for any single plane. And as you can see here, we've got quite a bit. Matter of fact, we're dealing with eight-point commanders and gunner here. All right, so as a ground attack, there's one thing you want to focus on more than anything else. That is protection. And the reason why I say this is protection gives you so much more. With protection expert... And going with a full defensive build, you're adding 28% life to your plane. That's a significant amount, ladies and gentlemen. Matter of fact, it is 2589. All right, that's that's pretty good. Now the next one we went with was demolitions expert. Now you may say, well, you don't really need it. Personally. In a plane that moves as fast as this plane can move, a lot of times you're going to be, you know, zipping in and out. Well, at least in my play style, you're going to be zipping in and out constantly, going as fast as you possibly can over the targets. So having a little bit more damage from your ordnance and having a little bit bigger radius uh, for the blast actually makes a lot of sense. And remember, guys, we are rocking those Fab 500 bombs. So 15% on that is actually quite significant. Uh, in many cases, you can get bombardiers from on people who are chasing you down low. It's really, really a kind of cool trick to do on a lot of air defense fighters because they're going to be the ones that are going to be down that low chasing on your tail. So Demolition Expert really does help in there. And just remember, guys, if you're over a point and you get a bombardier while killing like an enemy plane and, you know, attacking ground targets, that's more capture points for you, which is the name of the game for this plane. You want to try to cap the points as quick as you can and then transverse to the next point. Staying over a point for a prolonged period of time can be somewhat dangerous. Um, just look at some difficulties you might have when you're on the mine. And then here comes another plane, like say a heavy fighter or say a another IL-40 or possibly even a 329. Yeah, 329 technically can take you out. It's not the easiest trick in the book, but they can do it. So yeah, you want to be able to get in there, pound it hard, and then get the hell out. Period, point blank. Okay, so the next skill we went with was... Battle tested. Now, the reason why we went with this is chance to injury to pilot reduced by 20% and controllability. Well, this plane actually has some pretty good controllability, and this is a carryover from the IL-20 that we had. Um, and, of course, you know, your front guns are a majority of the damage output you're going to be doing, so keeping your pilot a little bit safer made a lot of sense to me. It means I don't have to use a... Um, a med pack on him as often as I possibly would and thus allowing me to always keep it for the rear gunner which is kind of an important thing and the last one we went with was engine guru we're a jet having more 
speed, acceleration, kind of makes a little bit of sense. Arguably, you could also possibly go with uh, Cruise Flight. I personally like Cruise Flight. I think it's a great skill. But in this case, I decided not to use it because Cruise Flight's really good for heavy fighters. Ground Attackers is only good getting to the point, but once you're over the point and you're always under constant uh, fire, and then as you're leaving the point, it gets a little bit crappy. So I'd rather just have a consistent engine speed. All right, so let's go to the rear gunner and take a look with what we got there. Okay, so with the rear gunner, of course, we always go with quick reflexes into defensive fire. And then, of course, we pick up the endurance. Now, the reason why we're going endurance here is basically to give more um, survivability for a rear gunner. That rear gunner is rocking a 23 millimeter cannon back there. Okay, that thing hurts a lot and it will do a lot of damage. But you want to make sure he's going to stay alive. Now, as you see, this is a seven point. We're just slightly off from getting him to 8. We could easily get him to 8, but eh. But uh, the next 3 points we're going, or next 2 points we get, are going to go into Precision Gunner, thus making that rear gunner even more disgusting. Now, some of you might ask, like, well, why don't you just change off Defensive Fire and go for Precision Gunner? Well, guys, um, again, ground attack planes are all about mitigating damage and just being a huge point sink, all right? People are going to waste a lot of time trying to kill them with their guns and rockets and whatever. Uh, and you want to be able to mitigate some of that damage. And I'll tell you right now, Defensive Gunner does not mitigate rockets, guys. Sorry, it does not work that way. But it will mitigate uh, cannon fire and machine gun fire. So, for me, that makes a world of difference. Yeah, sure, we've got almost 2,600 life, but... Uh, I found that defensive fire basically gives you anywhere from 15 to 30% more life when you really think about it in terms of uh, combat effectiveness. Now, yeah, sure, doesn't do shit to AA, and that can be somewhat of a problem in a slow-moving ground attacker, but against air defense fighters and things of that nature, it's a pretty good deal. And it also kind of plays into a combat strategy I use with uh, fast-moving ground attacks known as tag and drag. It also works with the SC-100 as well, too. So if you guys understand that concept from previous videos, then it'll make perfect sense here. All right. So that's the crew skilling, the explanation why. Now let's talk about the uh, equipment as well as the servicing. So obviously for equipment, we went with everything that was defensive. Um, the 5% health plus 20% uh, reduced chance on crit damage to wings and tail. And the reinforced airplane, airframe, which is 15%, and, you know, uh, protects the crew, engines, and wings. So now, if you guys were following along, that means my pilot is actually getting a 30% protection, and my rear gunner is getting a 30% protection. But guys, remember, we're also using uh, the protection expert skill, so that's actually increasing that by 40%. So if you want to do the math, yeah, you can go right ahead and do it. It's something like... 42 percent uh so yeah that's actually really damn good all right uh and of course we've got the additional plates just to give a little bit more protection to our rear turret like i said he is our bread and bird butter um and again this also benefits from all that other fun stuff with protection expert okay so let's get to services because this is kind of important yes we are running universal ammo why because we have six 23 millimeter guns the likelihood that we're going to start a fire with those versus a 20 is actually quite increased uh much in the same way like when you're using 30 millimeters you have a greater chance of causing crit damage and or possibly fire uh you throw universal on that then that fire chance actually becomes enabled and your crit chance goes up really really high uh one of the main reasons i really like universal here is for the fire chance on uh, structures like there's going to be times where you're uh, fighting over a point and you've used your ordnance and you didn't quite cap it or maybe you fucked up well at least you can rely on your guns to actually be able to do something right that's kind of an important thing you know, people who've played the german line you know that those 30s sometimes feel really really bad and you, you have to waste one entire strafe just to take down a concrete building it's annoying as all hell this not so much all right um and I like it for that. It plays into that fast-moving, you know, um, ground strafer. Uh, I don't have to, you know, hold back on the air brake as much. I don't have to hold back on the flaps as much. It allows me to just get in there, boom, 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 boom. Now, the secondary reason I really love Universal on this is because it's 623 millimeter cannons, which makes it ideal for shitting on other ground attack planes. Yeah, I know. The IL-20 wasn't overly that good for um, interdiction of other ground attack planes, just due to the fact that dual 57s, yeah, they can do a shit ton of damage when they hit, but the problem there is when they hit. 
Uh, but 623s uh, actually hit pretty consistently. And you have like a range of 800 meters on this. All right. It's 800 meters, right? I'm pretty sure it's 800 meters. Yeah, 800 meters. So that that's actually pretty damn good. That's better than any of those 30 millimeters. So you could get them from range, and you got six of these hitting. And I will tell you right now, and you'll see this in the video, this thing can shred even its own. All right, it'll shred IL-40s, it'll shred 329s, it'll shred the German equivalents. It just shreds everything. It's actually pretty good. Okay, so let's talk about the consumables here. We're rocking a first aid uh, dressing because really your pilot and your rear gunner, if you lose either or, can be very, very devastating for you. Uh, we got the pneumatic restarter because speed is kind of an issue here and you really never want to lose your engines while you're flying this thing. And we have weapons ventilation because we have six 23 millimeter guns. They will heat up. Being able to cool them down like that is really helpful, all right? It lessens the amount of dead time uh, when over a target, and that is very, very, very important. All right, so that's the equipment, that's the consumables, that's the upgrade, and now we're going to go and watch some footage, and I'm going to break it down for you, and hopefully you guys will enjoy. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so here we are. Um, now, this is Road to Rome, and it's a very interesting map, and as you can see, there is a mine, which is a priority as a ground attacker for us. Now, some of you might go, well, no, you should really go for the uh, command center down there. That way you get the offense going. And that is a valid argument, to be perfectly honest. But there's only one other player on the team. So I want to make sure that we get the point lead as quickly as possible. And that player is in a German multi-role at Tier 9. So first thing we're going to do is go to this garrison. So let's get to that now, shall we? Now... Garrisons are very interesting uh, creatures. They, you would think that they'd be simple to capture, uh, but in all honesty, they have a little bit of complexity to them that most people don't really ever pay attention to. All right, so let's uh, talk about what we're doing right here. Now, as you can see, directly in front of us, we've got the triple building with the three tents, and then we got another triple building with the three tents uh, kind of in a straight line. As a ground attacker, you want to make attack strafes that are going to hit the most optimum targets you possibly can. Now, the reason why we're going after these specifically is because they are classed as medium ground attack targets. And what I mean by medium is basically six uh, buildings in a generalized area. You look at an AA emplacement, that's generally four. All right, that's a small target. Uh, you look at the, the quad tent setup that is off to the right, that is a small uh, those generally give anywhere from like 15 to 20, where the mediums give uh, like 25 to 40, depending on uh, where it's at and you know what type of structure and what tier you're playing at. There's a lot of different factors there. So obviously for a Russian ground attacker, going for the most optimum, biggest point giving uh, targets in its uh, opening run with its ordnance makes a lot of sense. And I'll tell you right now, a single Fab 500 bomb, which this plane carries two of, will be enough to destroy one of those outright. Now, you could also gun them down. Uh, those uh, buildings are actually not that strong. And if you're running universal ammo, the likelihood of you getting um, fires on it and you know burning things down is quite significant. So that is also something to keep in mind. Now, uh, ordnance-wise, our... Big Fab 500 bombs, they're doing a ton of damage. So it's like 7,000 a shot or something of that nature. And then we've got a rockets that are hitting 1,800 a pop. Now, remember, this is pre-demolition expert, so add 15% on all those totals. Okay, so let's go in here. Now, you're going to see a mistake here as we're lining up. Um, for some odd reason, I accidentally, like, fat-fingered the uh, space bar as I was hitting alt to see... Um, distances on a couple things here uh so we lost the fab 500 bomb that is devastating all right so you got to be very very careful all right we're not just going to show you you know the good shit we're going to show you when we fuck up as well all right so here we are we're gunning um and as you can see there we did get a hit but not much we're gonna throw rockets out here and boom i think we missed that last tent that's fine we did get the first building which is technically all you need uh, for sector capture. It really is. Uh, you let everybody else finish off the work that you did, 
but again, that's not overly ideal. Now, as you can tell, our rear gunner is starting to kick off uh, some shells. So what we're going to do is we're going to try to point towards this valley over here, and then we're going to um, basically hit to the rear gunner. All right, so we're pointed to that valley there. A plane auto corrects itself slightly, and here we are. And as you can see, that rear gun is just decimating. We already took out his engine. Uh, so he's not going to be able to zoom away as easily. He's 136 meters. That's not an ideal position, especially with a 109G. Though, then again, 109Gs are wonky as hell, but they do tend to carry a 30 millimeter some places. So just remember, 30s hurt. Um, but yeah, no, that 23 millimeter cannon is disgusting, ladies and gentlemen. It's basically the same gun you got on the front, except for it's got a slightly better range. And because of that it does a lot of damage and let's just watch this that didn't take long now as you notice immediately after he goes boom right we instantly hit t now in areas like this you may want to get him down to where he's almost dead then hit t to uh, reposition yourself to let the auto fire uh of the gun itself actually finish him off that's actually a very very smart and way of playing it all right it helps protect yourself from crashing into these mountains that are all over this map so keep that in mind all right so he's dead we captured the point with that and so we're going to now head directly down the valley all right so we have half of our rockets left uh our bombs are going to take about mm, a minute or so to come back up that's kind of not ideal so that whole thing about going after the biggest point um area on a, a section here like for this mine which would be the center point does not apply because we're just not going to be able to do it with four rockets sorry it's just god's honest truth you can't but we can take out a secondary target now as you see here we're firing at these little carport looking structures there um those are classed as soft targets so you could easily gun them down the silos to the right of this structure that we're firing at, those are considered hard targets. So you're going to definitely want to use some ordnance here, but they can catch on fire from your 23 millimeter. So here we go. And then we got a fire. We're dropping off two rockets and the blast radius carries it over. This is one of the things that makes these 1800 damage rockets better than the other rockets that you can get with the plane yeah you get more of those rockets but the amount of damage they do kind of is mm, anemic in some cases uh normally i'd have to fire three to four of those in order to take out those right there instead i only had to fire two to take out all three so to me that that's a win-win scenario now looking at the mini map we've got two people coming in but we're not overly worried about that. And now it is three. And I guarantee one or two of those are ground attackers. So here we are. We're throwing more damage at targets down here. Trying to cause some fires. And we put a little bit more damage in there. Not much. We've got one rocket left. And look at that. We have a low health 329 right there. Now, you see how quickly he just exploded, ladies and gentlemen. And that's because of what these front cannons actually are. These are the top of the line uh, 23 millimeters from the Russians. They have a muzzle velocity of 2,000 meters a second. What does that mean? It means I don't have to lead as far. If you look at the Hispano 20 millimeters at this tier, they only have something like uh, 1,789 meters a second. Uh, that is like 15% slower than what we're firing and ours are bigger. Thus we do more damage. Uh, truth be told, these are the second fastest, uh, 20 millimeter ish guns in the game in terms of muzzle velocity. The fastest actually belongs to the American 20 millimeter cannons at 2080 meters a second. So yeah. And I think that's only on the pirate if I remember correctly. So no, it's on a couple other planes. So, yeah, you don't have to lead as much with it, which makes this plane kind of ideal for, you know, anti-ground uh, attack there. And because we killed a plane over the capture point, that gave us more CP. How much CP? 40 CP. You need like 160 to capture here. So we got about 40 for that uh, small one there. And then we've got another 40 there. So 
technically it's actually 140 to capture the mine my bad and as you can see we're over half there that's like 60 percent now that's actually really good uh we're just going to throw out that one rocket so we can get the reload quick yes there's one of the biggest problems with um russian lines of attack uh planes you don't get to reload your ordnance till it's all spent, i.e. all the rockets are gone or all the bombs are gone. It, it just won't reload. I think that's kind of something I would like to see fixed, specifically with Russian ground attack planes, but it probably will never be uh, changed, so it is what it is. Alright, that's an IL-40, ladies and gentlemen, and he's full health. Well, we were able to shit on the uh, 329... That was really damaged. Let's see how we do against the IL-40. So as you can see here, we're kind of boosting to tighten our turn here. We're also using flaps to tighten it as well. Just the word to the wise, this doesn't work nearly as well as you would think. Um, for ground attack planes, it's kind of meh, to be perfectly honest. But it does give you somewhat of an advantage. Not much. Okay, so here we are. We're on his tail and we're taking fire. And look at that, guys. We just did like 260 in about a second without much of an issue. Now, our guns are overheating. So here's where we're going to be probably hitting three right about right here. All right. Now, we hit that so we can come back in for our ground attacks. We have bombs that are up and ready. Uh, I'm just going to go here. And because we killed him over the CP, uh, we got even closer there. Like, seriously, all we have to do is take out a small target. But, you know, we're just going to be a gluttonous little bastard. Just going for some stuff right there. Boom. And that should take it. Hands down. There we go. So as you saw, it was really simple for us to take the mine there and fight other ground attackers that were attacking there. Now, yes, those were bots. Bots are stupid. We all know this. But once you realize that bots are kind of eh, you could get away with doing stuff like this quite a bit. And we took the mine, which is very, 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 very important. And we really need to keep it. So we're looking towards our next target, and that's going to be that command center, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, now looking at our ordnance here, our bombs are going to take a little over a minute to reload, uh, but our rockets are going to be up pretty damn soon. So we're going to head over there, but if we see any other ground attackers coming in, we're going to have to go and intercept, and lo and behold, we do. So right now I'm deciding which is more important, and I decide that the mine is definitely more important. Now, this might seem counterintuitive as it doesn't play to the role, uh, seriously, uh, being a defensive anti-ground attack you get nothing out of it in terms of grade role or any of that it does help with your mastery and it does help with um uh your combat points but outside of that not really so if you're looking to you know hit your grade fives and things of that nature this is not ideal however if you're looking to win this is ideal now that's a full 329 and i know a 329 can be really disgusting i've done some really really dirty things with it so I want to make sure he is not going to be a problem. Unfortunately, we lost the garrison there. Uh, so now it's even more important that we keep this mine. And there's a bomber up there that actually two bombers up there that I have no chance in hell of catching. Nor do I want to try. Okay. Now, as you can see here, we're kind of aiming in front of him. Yes, we do have very fast guns, but as he's closing the distance on us, uh, that's going to create kind of an overshoot scenario if we were to aim where we normally would. So you always want to lead ahead there. That way, even if it's missing, as it gets closer, it's going to start hitting right on the cockpit and about mid-wing section. So ideally there, taking out an engine and or possibly uh, knocking out the pilot as you're coming at him. And there went the pilot, ladies and gentlemen, and most of his life, too. Look at that, 649. Hitting that front cockpit on any plane is instant pain, and yeah. Okay, so now we're just going to use a little bit of speed and bank around. Uh, we're boosting just slightly to keep up with him, because he is a fast and nimble plane. Now, he's banking over. We're leading ahead again, and... 
he just vaporizes. Aiming for the cockpit, so important in this plane when you're fighting other ground attack planes, all right? So keep that in mind. Maybe not the easiest trick to do considering you're not that maneuverable, but it is still pretty advisable. All right. So that ground attacker has been taken care of. The only thing I got to worry about are a couple of these bombers up here that don't seem to be able to hit the broadside of a barn. So I'm not overly worried about that. So we're going to rebuild our boost here. Um, and we're going to come up and over this mountain. While we are technically a jet, we are a very, 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 very heavy jet. So yeah, we will lose speed quite a bit, even at the slightest of incline. But here we are, we're starting to head towards there. And as you can see, our uh, bomber wing dropped some bombs here and is actually doing quite a bit of damage. And it's going to make our job 10 times easier trying to capture this point. And our mine kicks off and that basically brought us back into the lead, even though we have a point deficit here. All right, there we go. Now our bombs are up, our rockets are up. And we throw a couple rockets there, but boom, and we take it away from them. All right, so we're going to be heading towards that garrison there. And looking at the minimap, we saw him coming in from a distance. Again, if you've got a rear gun, always check your minimap. Now, I want you guys to pay attention to this multi-roll right here. This is where some hilarity is going to ensue. All right. So, we're starting to take fire. Our rear gun's firing at him. Now... That is a 212, ladies and gentlemen. They have air to air rockets. What they like to do is get to about 500 meters or so, if not closer, and then unload rockets. Now, here's a little word of advice if you're playing the 212, and I know this for a fact hit R three times. All right? One set is never enough, and you want to kind of wiggle it around in the area because you're about to see me do something that is going to cause this guy to rage for the rest of the game. All right, so our rear guns are kicking in, and as you notice, I'm, I'm, I'm moving like left and right here, kind of wiggling out, not giving him uh, an easy target on our rear, because he is a player, all right? Now, because of that, all of his rockets missed, all right? The wiggling and everything missed, and as you can tell there, they were actually below us, all right? They didn't get a chance to engage. Now... Here's the thing. Why didn't they get the chance to engage? Did he not have Rocketeer? Okay, let's say he does have Rocketeer. Well, the moment he died, that Rocketeer skill no longer applied. So these rockets are just going forward. They're not tracking at all. Not to mention the fact that I was wiggling to kind of avoid any sort of lock that they could possibly get. Uh, best case scenario, I did actually take a little bit of damage from one of them. I did get hit by one of the rockets there. All right, you can see it. I did get hit by one of those rockets, but not a huge amount. All right, so we're coming in on this base, and again, same basic principle applies. Line up for the most targets here. So I want to neutralize that, and there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Rocket proof? No, you hit me with one rocket. Only one out of the eight that you fire in that salvo, which, if you look at the math on that, is not that much, ladies and gentlemen. It's like 150 per rocket. Yeah, not good at all. Without that rocketeer skill active, those rockets are kind of crap. Just saying. All right. So we're lining up on this small target here just to possibly take it and give us, you know, our secure cap point victory. Uh, again, you only have to destroy one thing in a sector to qualify as a sector capture once it's gone down. All right. Now I'm about to do something here I don't recommend. I just did not want to keep messing with it. And again, he's still talking. All right. And you see that, ladies and gentlemen? I am a cheater. Salty McSalt Salt. All right. So again, shooting this ground. Boom, 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 boom. And we've got this one right here. And I see him coming in right there. We got multiple fires going. So I don't have to use the rest of my ordnance to take that out. That's fine. Instead, we're going to try to go through this little valley. We kind of screw this up. I'm, I'll be the first to admit it. But we're going to want to go through this valley. And... There he is getting on my tail, so we instantly go there, and we're letting our rear gun. We've got company helping us here. Keep it up. 
And he is trying to get right on our tail. And he dies again, missing his rockets. Now, I did crash into the wall. I did. But he totally missed with his rockets again. Here's the thing, guys. If you're firing your rockets at the close possibility as you can, and you're near death, if you die, that whole rocketeering skill completely goes to shit every single time. I hate to tell people this, but that's a God's honest truth. He's also firing one salvo at a time at me. And again, accusations of cheating. That shit makes me laugh. All right. Coming back into the game. So we're going for this command center here. We take this, we get air superiority. Go back to World of Tanks goof. Sharp teeth. Um, I don't play World of Tanks. I play World of Warships. Uh, but seriously, you, you made a lot of really bad mistakes. Don't sit on my tail, first of all, okay? You, you, you rush to the tail every single time, and you got taken out quite easily both times by that. You're only firing one salvo at a time at me. That is a mistake, sir, okay? You never want to do that. You just set yourself up to die every time, all right? And it's looking like we're going to win before I even get there. So I'm just in, you know, whatever mode. And again, the guy is still talking shit. I mean, wow, how fucking salty can you be? You got owned. You accept it. Your your entire attack angles were completely off. Your, uh, <laughs> your ego of dying to the rear gun just basically drove you to do stupid things, sir. All right? Don't do that. That's how you screw yourself over more times than anything else. You let your ego dictate how you're going to play. Now, they took back a command center, um, but I don't think it's really going to matter at this point. Yeah. So there's our victory there. So let's take a look here. So 13,195 combat points. That's not bad. 1,210 mastery. Uh, for a ground attack plane, that's also pretty damn good. Now, the reason why we got that much is because of the amount of planes we were shooting out of the air with our rear turret, because that actually really helps out there. Anytime you get anything like rear gunnery, master, um, that actually adds to your mastery. Ramming does, Rocketeer does, any of the stuff that's on this left-hand side that you get will add to that quite nicely. So, yeah, that's how we were getting a decent mastery. Um, however, if you're not doing that and you're only focusing on ground targets, this is going to come out to be more around 890, maybe a thousand at best. And that's not a lot of experience that you're going to get off from that. You could actually have a 2000 point game, which I have had and have a thousand mastery. That made me feel really, really shitty. I, I just couldn't figure out how the hell that happened, but it is what it is. Uh, Wargaming and their infinite wisdom did not give too much mastery for ground attack, uh, targets for some odd reason. I don't know. Maybe it's just me. I don't know. But anyway, guys, that is the IL-40. I hope this guide was uh, helpful to you. I hope you had a good laugh at uh, Sharp Teeth there. But uh, yeah, do me a favor, guys. If you like these videos, please like, subscribe, leave some comments down below, uh, ask questions, all right? That's how you get better at things. You ask questions and, and experiment around. <laughs> Till next time, the Shiv saying, stay safe, have fun. May our Jesus bless you. Peace.